Good afternoon. I am Zhuheng Li from South Korea. I am a research scientist at ETRI. I'm also a professor at UST. I'd like to introduce my pixels tag function and its applications, including my first exhibition. Okay, I'd like to start with uh, how pixels tag has begun. So for me, it was my first attendance to this nice conference. It was a long way from Daejeon to Champaign. It took almost 21.5 hours, just a little, yeah. And Daejeon is located in the middle of South Korea. The distance between Seoul and Daejeon is almost similar to Seoul and Pyongyang of North Korea. So this is a map of Korea. A map of South, a uh, map of Daejeon with my photos. And the pixels tag came to life between the photos taken in Arboretum and my yoga class in my institute. So this is my photos taken at the Arboretum. It's my routine hobby to walk around the Arboretum and taking pictures almost every weekend. And these are the samples of my pictures. And this is one of my routine hobby. I'm practicing yoga. At every lunch time, it's almost 12 years for me. And when I'm posing this upside down, and maybe a hand standing position, my bloods are coming down. It was uh, two years ago. I was imagining the pictures taken the other days these pictures, I imagine that uh, some heavy, dark pixels are coming down to the ground and uh, light pixels are coming up. So after lunch, I jumped into my mathematical notebook and after quick coding, I could generate these abstract images. So how do you like it? I enjoyed it a very lot. So, yeah, the idea was very abstract, but I could not imagine the details, but I could see the details. So I thought that what happened, what will happen when I change the, uh, the position where the heavy pixels gathers, like the center lines, like here, or center position, like this one. So this one looks like a abstract flower generated using the pixels of real flowers is interesting. And when I move the uh, centers to the four corners, I could get these images and very tranquil, calm gradations also. So all these six pictures are generated using the same pixels. It's like that I could make an analogy there if you get a box of Lego blocks, you can build many things together. So sometimes you can build a spaceship or house or car. It's, I think it's very similar to the pixels. So I tested with many images with different parameters. So I could generate these very di different images, but they are sharing all the same pixels. So in a, a year ago, I tried to make a image using the pixels of the other one. So it's called a pixel swap. I used two pixel stack operations. I'll give you more details on this. So I'd like to give some more details on pixel stack. So basically, traditional uh, existing images, imaging are related to finding proper color values to the fixed positions, right? Like a CMOS or rendering grid. But for pixel stack operations, we are interested in finding proper positions for fixed set of colors. For example, for this given pixel grid and a color space, we can assign different colors to the grid, like this one. For the same grids, depending on which pixels we choose, they have uh, different images, right? 
But for me, I was interested in uh, fixing the set of pixels for the given set of Lego blocks. I wanted to build many things. So for these images, it can be changed into these images. They are very different, but they are using the same pixels. So in the left side, they are the given pixels over here. But these images are quite different, but they have the same pixels. So in this slide, this one is more interesting. This is a random RGB images, and they are generated using pixels tag operations only. They are quite different. I felt that I, it, it's like finding kind of gemstones from the sandboxes. Yeah, they, these, these are the basic ideas of pixel stacks. So I'd like to show some more examples. The first application is making abstract images. So this is a lantana flower taken by myself at the arboretum. It has very vibrant, diverse colors. When I apply pixel state operations, very different images are coming. This one is my favorite. I'm, I was quite a surprised to find this kind of uh, emergent patterns. If you see after the session, you can see my lattice, the colors are much, much better. So these ones. And for these images, I applied the pixels text to locally, to their local patches, like this one. And when I do random sampling, it's much interesting. So for these images, I made a, a long strand of pixels and applied a kind of space filling curves, like a spiral and a piano curve, and a Hilbert curve. They are all using the same pixels. For these images, the method is similar, space filling. But before applying the space filling, I applied global sorting of colors. So similar colors are clustered. So piano curve and Hilbert curve. So all these 16 images are using the same pixels from one flower. Quite interesting. So second application is, I think that a pixel stake is a kind of a new way of appreciating the master paintings. So these Im two images were generated using a fa very famous paintings. So you know what, which one is the source. You can guess, can you guess? It was from this image. <laughs> Go to Armored Blossom. It was quite surprising that it uses very little colors, right? And these two images are from the same image of Go Green Greenfield. And this image is from Gohus Iris, this one. So by applying pixels text, we can enjoy colors of original paintings. And when I show these pictures, many friends easily could find the answer. The answer is this picture is a random sampling of this image. And this is uh, applying pixels take locally over the grid on this image. My third application is applying two pixel stacks to generate one image using the pixels of the other ones. I call this pixel swapping. It's a pixel swap function. So I tested with the t two images, firstly. One is from Claude Monet's uh, Japanese bridge, and uh, the second one is a claimed kiss. So can you imagine 
the uh, result. This one, I could generate very golden pond with their uh, bridge and a green kiss. Initially, it was generated using the images in the, in the center. The pixels are coming from this one, and these pixels came from this one. But when we directly apply pixel sw swapping, the uh, brightness is a bit too much or too real. So in that case, I, I can apply intensity swapping. So after pixel swapping, the colors are coming from this imagery and color brightness is coming from the sources. So we can make more enjoyable images similar to the sources. So this is the pictures. This is the image generated using the source image of this one and pictures taken by myself at my local arboretum with small pond and bridge. So two oh, photo and a painting has swapped their colors. And I experimented with self portraits with many pictures and I found that uh, this self portrait is quite genius because it is using so little colors and the genius patterns are kind of like a kind of a color sponge. It observes every color and makes itself more vibrant, as in these examples. So I applied the uh, pink colors of uh, flowers taken in the abratum. This is the uh, animation of making these images. So it's a pixel-wise transition. So intermediate steps are quite smooth and natural, even in the large scaling. It looks quite natural and smooth. You can see the uh, red eyes. Because I'm not considering any semantic segmentations or things like that. I'm not using neural nets yet, so, so it will be kind of a next step. I'm just using algorithmic operations. So I, my, my wife and I enjoy this image so much, so we made a, a print over the backs, and I, I'm carrying that. So in my seat, you can see my, okay, Mr. I forgot to bring that <laughs> to the podium. I'm sorry. Yeah, this one. <laughs> I forgot to bring this one. You can see me, please. Awesome. This example shows a continuous changing of colors using multiple flowers. So starting from the pink flowers, it's changing smoothly to yellow ones. I'm mixing, changing the blend of two images continuously. And uh, pixel swap can be applied to multiple images other than two. In this case, diagonals are original paintings of Gohus and uh, off diagonals are pixel swapped ones. In this case, 15 diagonals are famous paintings and off diagonals are pixel swapped ones. When you make a random sampling, it is quite interesting to find the uh, original ones. So I wanted to give uh, light to this dark dining table of Gohu's potato eaters, and I thought that lights could come from this. Claimed kiss, as here, we could see many details, and we could see the the uh, solid family food after the hard work. So I think that pixel swapping is a very interesting 
new way of appreciating paintings. So in this case, I wanted to mix very sacred picture and earthly one. This red one is a gambling card in Korea and Japan. So I could generate this red kiss. Okay, in this example, I wanted to make a time transition between day and night. This one is from Sejan's scene, and this one is from Gok. This is an animation over here. You can see the very, very smooth transition between day and night, and night and day. Okay, so I wanted to make a physical medium of my digital painting, so I tested a postcard only this year. And I have one, and after the session I can show you. And every picture has a one line of a mathematical code. Since it was generated actually using that function, pixel swap and pixel stacks. Like this one. This is a genesis of pixel stack. I love this one. And my last application is exhibition. I was very lucky to be invited in as an artist in the science festival. I hold two exhibitions at once. First one is open in uh, uh, IBS. It's a very famous institute of uh, basic science. It has a lantana pixel text over here. And every other picture is wholly generated using Mathematica. I'd like to explain this, but I don't have much time, so I will skip the second exhibition. Yes, it has a the genesis of pixel tag and pink goose, and these 15 famous portraits and others. All, all of them are generated using Mathematica, and it has a one line of code on the other paintings. So for me, they ask that, why are you doing this? Except your research work. So I answer with this slide, as you all of can, you read this one, right? <laughs> In Korean. It's a very famous Korean line, a Korean uh, line from the Korean drama called Mr. Sunshine. It gets 8.8 .8 in IMDb. I was surprised <laughs> to find that. It says that I love unproposed things by nature, like a moon, star, flower, wind, laughter, joke. It was quite interesting that Mathematica was very productive to do un unproposed things. I'd like to think, thank people behind this technology and the community. Okay, thank you for listening.